Spurs, a lot of talk about them bottling stuff, a lot of talk about not enough players coming in. Another big talking point is this debacle with their stadium. It's a joke. I, mean, I was listening to a, a radio station today and a guy phoned up, didn't give his name. He sounded pretty legit. You know, he was, you know, he, no dog in the fight. He, he supports a lowly level team. He's a contractor on, on the building site and he just basically said they all knew in December, January, that it wasn't going to be ready. He said that he thinks it's wrong that they're, they're, you know, they're playing tonight. Okay, City won, right? But they were playing tonight on a pitch that is the worst quality Premier League pitch I've seen in over 20 it's years. It's shocking. It's, I was, obviously, I, I go to university. I go to the university in the stadium. Yeah. And I saw the pitch before and after Barcelona as well. That was shocking. That was disgraceful. The fact that they, they were playing on a pitch, which, to be honest, I think, I think that it was turfed up. I think everyone would see that coming. The fact that NFL branding is still on there, you look at it, if, that, if, I, was, if I was Tottenham, I'd be looking at that and going, well, you know, we, we're paying to be here. I understand it's a shared venue, but at the same time, come on. The, the, the fact that that branding was so prominent still, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a debacle. It's shocking. It's, I mean, they've played there this season. They've, at Wembley, they've played at MK Dons. Was it a League Cup game they played there? It was. They may get their stadium opened at some point this year, which means they're going to have three home stadiums. Now, that's not good for them. It's not good for fans that already bought tickets. It's not good for away fans, where we're going to be playing, what, we, what we're going to be doing. Wembley's a nightmare to get out of for people. Mm -hmm. But equally, it's. I, I've read somewhere that it's like the debt is increasing to like £500 million getting this built now. So they, they already had a summer where they didn't spend money. So I think there's problems that, that Spurs fans should be very concerned about. The future of their club in terms of... We, we saw with Arsenal, the stadium... It's a beautiful stadium, the Emirates. But the amount of money it cost them, and then the lack of spending because of it for a decade, Arsenal still haven't caught up. Mm. And Spurs, for me, are just on that edge, on that precipice of becoming a big, big team in terms of challenging for major honours. And the debt that's now increasing... The debacle that's coming around it. Is there going to be a lack of investment? And look, Pochettino has done an amazing job with the budget that he's done. He's developed these players. They've, they've bought some bargains that have turned out to be, you know, they've bought bargains in like Deli Alley for four or five million pounds who have gone on to now be worth, for me, 80 million plus. Everyone's going to have mm -hmm. a different viewpoint, but 80 million pound plus. They've got a really good group of players. They've got, for me, an exceedingly talented young manager that's going to go on to great things. But this whole debacle, it feels like this, this stadium issue, could, for me, could be the sort of the, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back a little bit. And on top of that, there are lots of rival fans call, saying that the rule state, you can't have no more than, is it no more than one? You can't have more than one stadium. You can't have more than one season, stadium, uh, stadium in a season. They're getting special treatment for that. Fans feel that that's unfair. People are calling for them to get points deductions because of it. Especially, get, you know, this the, the, the Premier League now is such a global brand. It is such a um, uh, such a recognisable sport. To play on a pitch like that tonight, I find that disgraceful. You as a, you're a rival, so, you know, you've mm -hmm. got a little bit of a dog in this fight. But do you think they should be sanctioned with a points deduction? Do you think they should be fined? Do you think something should happen to the club for this horrible situation that they have put themselves into? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to look at this as a football fan rather than as a Chelsea fan. Um, for, for me personally, I think business-wise as well, Daniel Levy's managed just poorly. You know, if, if they did know it wasn't going to be done in, in December of 2017, then really he should have been speaking to the FA, to Wembley and EE and organising this um, well, the next season so that they could get it done and there'd be no issues. Yeah, He's not done that. And he's now basically having to chase other places, find other stadiums, do other stuff to make sure that Tottenham still can play football. Mm -hmm. At one point, there is going to be a game over the next few months, and it will happen. I'm almost yep. certain of it, which will be postponed because Tottenham can't play there. The, the, the day after we play Tottenham, for example, um, on the 24th of November, 25th, you have the Wembley Cup. Mm -hmm. The Wembley Cup needs, it's, 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 the stadium is sponsored by EE. And the tournament is sponsored by EE. Yep. They're going to want to have that, that stadium being prepared. So Tottenham, it's, 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 it's the stuff where the management has been poor. Tottenham should be deducted points based on that, based on poor communication. The, if the rules state they can't have more than one stadium in for a season, then it remains that way. They should be at Tottenham for this season. End mm. of discussion. 
if they do decide to move to their new stadium, if it is prepared, if it is done by the end of this season, the points deduction should be put in place. I'm not going to count the one game of Milton Keynes because there have been teams in the past where something's been going on and there was, or something's happened which meant they yeah. have had to play their stadium out there, mm-hmm. their game elsewhere in another stadium. That's fine. That's that's a as long as that's a one off for me, I'd be sitting out as the FA looking at it going, you know what? That, you know, it's 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 not affected us. That's it's as simple as that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just reading reading here the uh, article in the Guardian. So it's not going to be ready until I was just reading here uh, 2019. Um it doesn't it just says 2019. It doesn't there, there isn't like a date set, a game set. I think I think the game that I read it was going to be Burnley. So I think it was January, I think. I think, yeah. So it's, is it? I don't know. Is, is, is some, it, it, could, it, could, it could be that. It, it's, it, I, look, I just find it, the, the bit that's frustrating for me is I think the Premier League, look, before points deductions and before they're sanctioned, it's almost this case of the Premier League needs to investigate because, you know, there are contractors and there are, again, some of these contractors, you know, they might, they're not going to turn the work down if they're, not Spurs fans because people have got to feed their kids and pay their mortgages. But equally, you know, there might be some contractors there that are Chelsea or West Ham or Arsenal. I, I, I heard that West Ham fans, when they put the pitch down, of late shirts, they Sunday, put yeah. the shirt These, these kind of things always happen. But some of them, you know, I, I'm hearing reports that they knew this was going to happen. They knew that they, like, to build a brand new stadium in a year, you're talking, I, I, I've, I've spoke to, like, I've got friends that are sort of, they don't build football stadiums, but they build buildings. And they're like, yeah, like anyone with great industry knowledge was, was like, unless it's almost impossible. And I don't know this. I'm not an expert. So I'm just, I'm just stating what I've heard people say, what I've read in magazines, newspapers, what I've, what I've heard people say on, on, on calls and stuff. So I'd love someone to come on and clarify. But if there's any, the points deduction, everyone's going to say yes or no to it. You know, do you damage, the, do you punish the team for administrative errors? Well, if they went into administration, they have a points deduction. So that, that's the rules. Um, what do the laws on this say? Is it fair on the fans to have a points deduction? So there are there is something to debate. But I think if the football club knew five months ago, six months ago, ten months ago, when they started that it was going to be almost impossible to get it done in a year, if they had any inclination this was going to happen, then for me, some type of sanction, some sort of punishment has to be handed out because you're deliberately deceiving people put in, put in season like if they knew in december for instance i'll just throw that out there that's purely uh, uh, me, me, me giving a, a hypothetical if they knew in december it wasn't going to be ready but yet they put their um season tickets on sale that's deception yeah that that, is. it's almost fraud well, you know there is fraud the, the fans aren't going to be if there if they knew that that wasn't going to happen and you you had like i, I remember listening to uh, an, there's an irish lady phoned up um a a talk show and she said that that they they bought season tickets but there was a game that, like, I think the first two home games, her and her family said so there was, like, four season tickets, five season tickets. That, that cost a lot of money at Spurs. You're talking over 10 grand for all them tickets. But then the family booked fl- return flights from Ireland for t- first two home games that they were meant to be there, hotels, etc. And like a lot of these budget airlines you, you book with, like, no, non-refundable. So it's non-refundable. Hotels, non-refundable because the prices shoot up when football matches are local. local. So just those two home games, forget what they pay for their season tickets because they can still go to the games at the other stadiums. Just on, on the flights and the hotels that they had that they had booked in, they said spent like another £700. And you think that was one story. You think there must be multiple. They, look, okay, a lot of Spurs fans live in, live in London, Essex, Hertfordshire. But there's a lot of these people that are Spurs fans as kids that might live in Scotland now, Wales now, might live in certain parts of Europe that have booked flights, booked hotels, work takes them away. That, that, so there's, again, but that's why I, I'm like on the fence with a points deduction, simply because that impacts the fans. And I think Spurs fans have been let down yeah. every bit as much as everybody else. However, if there's rules against it, I don't see why, unless there is, unless something went, tr- tr- you know, they found like a three unexploded bombs that took them three months to defuse. Like if there was like a, a, a structural problem that, that they could not have controlled. Then you say, okay, I kind of, that's not your fault. It's like unforeseen circumstances. Mm. But I'm just hearing loads of reports that they knew this was going to happen. And it, it, for me, the whole thing just, it, it means embarrassing for Spurs at, at, at the very least. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it, it, we're saying it'd be unfair on fans. I would say if it was Chelsea, when we built our new stadium and there was a problem, if Man United decides to build a new stadium, whoever it is, if the points reduction is there because the club screwed up, it's there. It's as simple as that. 
I, I understand for the fans it would be difficult considering the amount of money mm, they may have mm. spent on stuff. But that was the club's fault. It's not the fans' fault. The club is the one that's in the Premier League. You know, the, the name that's on the on the board is Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham Hotspur are the ones to blame for this. And uh, unfortunately, if that means a point deduction, they, they are. They are. They are at the end of the day. And I, I, I get that. I get that. I just, yeah, it's, um, yeah, a real, a real embarrassment. It really is. Let's do a few comments actually. Where he says, Terry, I think uh, there has been a drop off this year for. Oh, they're talking about City. This, I, want, I see some comments about the stadium here. I saw one a minute ago. Um, where's it gone? It says the the FA board are highly. Um, disproportionate when it comes to justice spurs should be deducted uh, a few points based on their descent we have to prove that descent and that's the point like it should be for me the minimum that should happen is it should be thoroughly investigated mm -hmm. you know and it shouldn't take long it's like you know you've got to make sure that but it's an interesting one how many of these contractors are ringing there's another comment from that same guy i wanted to find here it says yeah met a guy last year in august who happened to work on the spurs stadium project and he did um categorically tell me uh, that there was no way the stadium would be ready this year um, and that they were really far behind. Now, again, I'm not dis I'm believing you. I'll take that as, as the truth unless someone proves me wrong. I think a lot of people don't mind stating this, but would they, again, this is where it becomes hard. And this is where, like, I don't want to use the word corruption because that's going to sound harsh, but if, you, if, you're, if, you're a con if you're a contractor and you've got a big amount of income coming, you've got 10 employees, you've got your family at home, their families to think about, are you, if the FA come to interview you to say that we need to know whether this was like always going to fail or not, we knew it was, they, they, did Spurs know? If they come out and say, yeah, look, they, they definitely knew we were, we were nine months behind with three months to go. We knew this. We were briefed on it. I suppose those contractors are going to worry that they're going to have that contract pulled from underneath them, the rug pulled from underneath their feet. Not for doing that, but it'll be, okay, we're not happy with this that you've done. Or they look like, so if nobody comes out then and actually... I'll use an East London term, grasses them up. If nobody comes out and tells the truth, because it won't be a, a it's not a criminal matter. It'll just be a, 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 an FA investigation. There's no, they don't have to tell anyone. Mm. You don't have to come forward and testify, but it's a case you'd have to prove, the problem is you have to prove all this stuff. And I don't know whether the contractors and the people in the know would want to risk losing contracts, want to risk losing money just to get Tottenham a three point deduction. It isn't, you're not talking about like, Spurs have, have have been covering up sexual abuse of of of, the, of of children. It isn't like they've been committing. Maybe they have committed fraud, but maybe it isn't like they've been embezzling millions of pounds of money. You're not talking about a major crime here that that morally, ethically, and socially we should be tackling. You're talking about football pitches being ready to play football games on. So are people going to risk their, their businesses? Like you'll probably find some smaller contractors have their whole business tied up in that. And if they lose this contract, they could go out of business. Are they going to risk that to give Spurs a three point, six point, five point deduction? I don't think they are. No. I can't see, I, I literally can't see. You have opened a whole can of worms here, which I hadn't even thought about. It's, you've got to it's, prove this stuff. Yeah. Again, anyway, it's very easy to, to anecdotally, it's why I like, there's always a lot of when you, when you listen to whether it's sports debate, whether it be um, people talking politics or what's going on in the world. When people give you anecdotal examples, that's great. That's you're just tell, that's, that's that's this whole nonsense. That's your truth. It, it makes it human. Yeah, that's, that's, and we all do it. Like I've worked in the banking industry for for the last twelve years of my life, and you know I can tell you loads of anecdotal things I know went on in the banking system. I can't actually prove they happened though. I have no evidence they happened. Only what I'm saying. And me just saying it isn't, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. Does that make sense? Like no, you can believe no. me, the viewers can believe me, but when it comes to somebody, a sanctioning body coming in, I've, you have to physically prove these things. And Spurs would always win in, in a court of arbitration if they went, yeah, but nobody's actually, prove it. You know, it is, you know, I, I remember reading somewhere once that like you could be accused of something, admit to it unofficially, but then say prove it. If they can't prove it, you can't be, you can't be, not actually confess, innocent but like, until proven yeah, guilty. Yeah, exactly. And I think that again, we all, I I believe what these contractors are saying, but you ain't proving this stuff. We've got one caller on this. You say, let's get this caller on the air to speak about the stadium. I'd love it to be my dad. He's a Spurs fan. I'd love to know what he thinks. Hello, welcome to Fan Park Live. What's your name? Hello, my name's Callum. Hello, Callum. How you doing, mate? Who do you support? Scarborough. Fan. Scarborough. I thought so. I thought I recognised the voice. Um, yeah. Listen. Um, Hello, mate. Listen, um, what's your views and opinions on this on this debacle of, a, of the new stadium for Spurs? Um, it's, it's pretty disgraceful, to be honest. Embarrassing for the club's image and everything. I think, personally, I think they should have to concede all home games until the stadium is built. 
in my opinion. Yeah, but that's see, that's not going to happen, is it? Because it, okay, I will tell you yeah. why. That, 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 that's what, that, that, my no, opinion. I don't, I don't say it's going to happen. No, I, okay, but I tell you why your opinion is is wrong, and I will just because let's say that's ten home games. That means the ten teams, so they concede them. So does that mean? They, let me actually ask you a question. Does that mean they don't play them, and the, the, the other team just gets three points? Yeah, and they should get a three 0 win. Okay, so how is that fair then on the the, the remaining eight teams? So say, say they have ten games like that. So ten teams get three goals and three points. What about the other eight teams in uh, that will play them when their new stadium is built? That's an unfair advantage on eight other teams because they've gained three points over all their rivals without playing a football match. So you're not actually pun. You're, yes, you're punishing Spurs, but you're also pun punishing another eight teams. Imagine. You're, you're uh, imagine, okay, Man City get three points and three goals tonight. Imagine they win the Premier League by one point or by goal difference by plus two. Jesus. You can't, you couldn't do that to their right, the, the people they're up against. So it, it doesn't, I, I get that's what you would do, but you could, you would, when you think about it logically, it would never make any sense to do that. Mm. Uh, yeah, I guess, guess fair enough, I guess. What, what, what uh, other methodology would you consider? Um, what about, what about like a 10-point deduction? Then? See, I think, I think that's... I, I, that, to be honest, I was sat there... When we were talking about points deductions, I thought a 10-point deduction would probably be the one I would personally consider. It's a big deduction of points. It is, but Spurs are, uh, you know, see setting an example here. This is a club which, as we're saying, may have been committing fraud in terms of what they've been, uh, been doing. That would, that would drop stuff. them down to like 13th. I mean, as no, tw 12th, sorry, in the league, if that happened to them right now, they'd be 12th well, behind Leicester. Wow. I well, promise I'm not thinking of a Chelsea team. <laughs> no, we've got 17 points. They'd be on, we'd be six points in front of them if they had 10 points taken off. You, you, cheeky, you cheeky so and so. <laughs> cheeky. Well, I had, to, I had to pay you back because I pissed off all the Liverpool fans. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. You absolutely, you really annoyed Liverpool fans the other day. They were, they, were, they were scathing with you. They really, really were. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were, but um, yeah. but no, absolutely. Um, listen, from your listen, I really appreciate you coming on, giving us your viewpoints, mate. Cheers, thank you. There we go. Listen.